Hey, folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Dwarf Fortress, the uh, Steam Edition, Premium Edition. I don't know, I, I probably will just keep calling it the Steam Edition, even though that's not entirely accurate. But uh, what can you do, huh? Well, I'll tell you one thing we can do is we can listen to the wonderful people who sent some messages vis-a-vis -vis our Fluxstone over here. Uh, shout out to Aku on the Discord, and uh, there are a couple people as well in the Yubtub comments um, that pointed out that maybe the one of the reasons we're a little short on chalk, although part of it is we just hadn't actually mined out that much chalk, really. Um, I was going to say it's level 24 where you'd mine out some chalk. We hadn't actually mined out that much, but the other thing is under stone use, so under labor and stone use, um, non-economic, or there are economic stones and non-economic stones. It's sort of a big subdivide in Dwarf Fortress. Um, the idea being your dwarves aren't going to use coal or hematite, for example, to make furniture with, because these are economic stones, um, and so they're not going to be used for those sorts of things by default. However, it turns out, I didn't realize this, that our flux stone chalk over here, there's also marble listed down here as well. Um, I guess it's only listing the things that maybe are actually physically present um, in our fortress. Well, unless I did this at some point, but I have no memory of doing that. So I'm assuming these are on by default. Uh, they are flagged to be allowed to use for non-economic jobs. So our chalk that we did mine out was being used to make doors and other furnishings and things like that, which I don't really want. So I've gone and tagged that off. Depending on your fortress, if, you, if you're short on stone, for making tables and things, and you've mined out a lot of things like chalk, then you could use it. But by default, I'd be happy with that turned off. I don't think I turned that on. So I don't know if I would have wanted that on by default, but I guess it's okay. Anyway, now we can go ahead and turn that off and our chalk will no longer be used for regular furnishing jobs. Uh, Aku is very eagle-eyed actually, and had spotted it in one of our, right here. See, Aerith has created a masterpiece chalk cabinet what a freaking eyeball to spot that and then they realized oh chalk's being used for construction holy cow anyway so that's going to keep a good supply of our flux stone around for our steel industry which i'm very excited about that we did start last last episode um on the surface here things are still feeling pretty good population has gone up we were going we're pretty short on people for a while short on people dwarf joke we're pretty short on population for a while, but uh, that has improved uh, because we did finally get a migration wave. We do still have some cranky people. A lot of that is left over from the uh, from the very early death we had from an unfulfilled artifact production, which is a darn shame. But hopefully we can get people's moods a little bit better. Um, you know, we're starting to get some... we got a nice little very active tavern over here, dining hall and, temp and tavern. We've got uh, a, a temple going on right now, which is good. We do have a fair amount of children, but at least they can help with hauling. So they can't do a lot of jobs. But I have to remember in this version of Dwarf Fortress, um, d Dwarven children are actually quite a bit more productive than they were in uh in older versions uh which is really nice i think i'm going to put down some smoothing jobs because i do want everything to look a lot nicer try to keep our dwarves in as good of a memory as or good a mood as possible so that they can generate hopefully some good memories or at least counter the bad ones so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and put down a wall smoothing task here and i'm gonna cover this entire area over here i might go and say listen don't bother with that part of the hallway that's going to be all right but do bother with these rooms, please. Uh, I will probably do the area down here with the workshops as well, because, you know, our dwarves might get some thoughts out of that, but we'll start with this. Got some combat. What is going on? Giant mole. Ooh. Is being knocked by a giant bat. Okay. So we're not actually involved in those combats, so we're okay with it. It's pretty crazy, though. The bat was, like, flinging the mole around. I do like the combat descriptions. I would like it if we could access these a little bit more consistently because once the combat reports go away, like if I right click all of this and that, as far as I know in the current UI, we cannot access those old reports anymore, which is just, just tragic. There's our daily job for tetrahedrite if we've got any, and we did actually go out and track some and set up some mining for tetrahedrite last episode so that uh, well, the copper from it is gonna be useful this magnetite over here the copper for me is going to be useful but mostly i was looking forward to getting the silver tetrahedrite gives you both and the silver will be uh will be useful for our war hammers let's add it oh okay just started the episode game but sure go ahead and do an autosave it is the first of summer 
So, did we go through all spring without a trade caravan? I think maybe. Uh, admittedly, the technically this... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say something about the siege, but I'm getting, again, confused between my two Dwarf Fortress games. Ooh, Eradication of Monsters. Nebo, absolutely, buddy. Nebo, Nebo, Nebo. Human Lasher. Monster Slayer. Yeah. You are shameless? Well, I guess a lot of humans are. Maybe he'll become a politician. That seems to be the way things go. What is uh, that on the ground? Is that a puppy? I think it was. I unpaused and then moved away. Oh. It keeps sort of vanishing. It, it keeps buzzing around here. Not that one. It's not that one. The problem is with, like, stacked tiles, sometimes it can be hard to spot. Oh, right here. Yeah, Izum. A puppy. Oh. Is this my favorite tune? I think so. Drinking Industry is really, really good. I've been listening to the soundtrack a bunch on my own. I, it's such a good soundtrack for the premium version. Good work music. I mean, if they can't whistle while they work, they can at least listen to some banging tunes. Maybe that's one of the things with having all of our bards now in our um, uh, in our in our temple or in our tavern is they're going to be they're, that's that's what all this music's coming from. Although we don't have any instruments yet, I mean, we could start fabricating them. But here's the deal with the instruments. Um, if I go and find right over here, I can't find my craft workshop. I must have moused over it. Is it is it not on this side? Is it over here? There it is. A little bone. I'm not uh, still haven't learned all the new graphics. Um, you can make instruments, but you have to make now depending on. Oh, actually, we kind of lucked out. I hadn't realized. Um, the instruments for your culture are procedurally generated when you create your world. Some of them require a bunch of parts to assemble. Some of them can be assembled directly, and as it turns out, we do have a few we can assemble directly. I'm gonna queue up just a one-time uh, ask over here for an anger a nickel. And a Sedish. You can check the descriptions on those too. Actually, can we check on them in here? I click here. No, no, that's that detail. I wonder where you can find it. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, we'll bang out a few of those. We do have the storage in our tavern for instruments, so they should get brought out. Uh, I'm going to say no to more bards. I think we've got enough to, to generate stuff, at least for now. All right, get decorating. I'm really hoping we don't have too many people snap. Because we could go into a bigger tantrum spiral thing. Basically, one person snaps, starts a fight with someone else, they get cranky, or worse, someone dies, and then everyone who's friends with the person who died gets that much more upset, and it just it's just a, a horrible chain reaction. I think we talked about last episode that I was going to start planning out some noble quarters because our population is almost to the point where we're going to with the mayor. And actually, if we are going to get some of this badness, we might want to consider setting up a justice system as well so that people can be punished if they if they commit crimes. Um, there are pros and cons to having a justice system um, in play because dwarves do, of course, get pretty cranky if they get thrown in prison, but they're going to have to deal with it. Um, I... As much, it, I have talked about a few times here. Oh, human caravan has arrived. I've talked, maybe, maybe do elves come in the spring and maybe we just don't have any elves nearby. Because I don't think we got a, actually, I don't think we've gotten any elven caravans in this fort, have we? Oh, that is possible. Um, so I've talked about it before. It's actually quite efficient to build your fort with kind of vertical mentality around the area of your central staircase. Um, but sometimes it's nice to have everything on one floor because it looks quite impressive. I'm a little bit worried that if I keep building stuff, we're going to get a little further from the, um, the staircase. But really, with bedrooms, it's not as much of a big activity place, right? Like the workshops and things, I really want to minimize how much movement is happening. But maybe with the bedrooms, it's okay that it's a little further on. So I might go and expand, make a block of noble bedrooms over here. I think I will. All right, human caravan has arrived. They're going to be setting up over here. Let's ask for some goods to be moved. Again, not entirely loving the trade UI um, over here, but we'll do what we can because we must. Finished goods. 
Oh, these are bars, and we don't necessarily want to trade those away. Bars, bars, leather, new. Finished goods, yes. More here. Oh, citron wood. That smell delicious. Finished goods. And most of them looking at the high value ones. As well, even if there's a second finished goods, it's not the end of the world. Do we really only have those? Because these are all bar blocks and leather. But there's a gem bin over here. Alright, we'll bring it up just in case we decide to sell those as well. Although theoretically we could turn a higher profit if we use the gems to uh, encrust our finished goods and sell those. I think it, it turns out to be an even bigger value multiplier. Alright. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll wait for them to get set up and for the goods to be brought over. Then we'll send the broker over there. All right, let's do... So let's figure this out. Um, Rather than build another hallway that's sort of central, I think I might build a hallway here just so that it is a little close to the staircase for the noble rooms. Is that what I'm going to do? Yeah, I think it will. All right, they're unloading their goods. Let's make a double wide hallway somewhere over here. And for the noble rooms, when you get very high end nobles, right? As people go up the nobility rank, they will want incredibly impressive bedrooms, especially when they get to like, if you've got a, the, the king or queen of the dwarven civilization in your fortress, they're going to need something absolutely gargantuan. But until then, you can make do with things that are not actually like hugely huge. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to build some five by three rooms, which I think should be plenty of for us right now. Um, your your noble dwarves, and that includes your sheriff, for example, um, do need three separate rooms. They need an office, a dining room, and a bedrooms. So I'm going to go with something like that. Sometimes I big, build them bigger. Um, I, I don't think I ever build them any smaller than this. Uh, we could make them a little fancier, though. Maybe, hold on. Let me do that. I will designate a bigger room, but not necessarily use the whole thing. I'm going to go and just trim the corners off. So these rooms will look kind of cool. This doesn't affect your dwarves, but it affects you. There you go. All right, well, they got something like that, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, diplomacy with the humans. Uh, you know what? I like sea otters. We'll ask for the leather. Other than that, I don't think we ask for anything specifically from the humans. I mean, whatever they bring, they bring... I think is fine. Well, you know what? We don't mind their booze. Although, it would, it would be great to be able to, like in classic Dwarf Fortress, just sort of put a request for all of them simultaneously. I'll just flag a few of these. I mean, they're going to bring booze regardless. You know what? Um, Rye beer. There you go. Just, just bring that, and then whatever else happens is okay. Uh, I will potentially ask to make sure they bring glass. And actually, if they bring lye, charcoal, even potash, these they're they're relatively more demanding. Um, cheese and blocks, huh? Uh, blocks of cheese. They're relatively more labor demanding jobs. So if we can shortcut that a little bit, it's not the end of the world. But again, we're mostly just going to buy whatever they happen to bring, and I'm not going to worry about it too much. Okay, meeting's over. Let's request the broker at the depot. Doesn't seem to take him too long to unpack. I feel like. It feels to me like it used to take them longer to unpack. Now it feels like once they arrive, they unpack almost instantly. Like, I very rarely have had the issue where the, we get the complaint that they haven't done unpacking yet. All right, let's see what we might want to grab from them. Glass, yes. I don't think... I, I'm not sure, but I don't think that I've ever seen an artifact demand clay. Possibly because I don't usually have clay in the fortress. If you have any of it at any point, then I think it can. it's a valid demand. But I think if you've never had it, it's not. Now, I don't know if that counts trade, but yeah, I just I've n I don't think I've ever seen clay be demanded specifically for anything. Um, we could buy wood. The thing with wood is it is really cheap. Right? Three dwarf bucks per log. And it saves us from having to go cut down trees, which I don't mind cutting down trees because trees are, of course, evil. But it takes extra time, so what the hell. And rope, we always need a little trickle of rope, and if we can just buy a little bit, that's going to be okay. This is an instrument. I think the thistle is an instrument as well. Uh, don't need the cat or the goat. 
I, I'm going to go ahead and get some of these cages because we're starting to lay out some cage traps. And again, it'll save us a little bit of labor. Why not? Um, I don't know what we need bee venom for, if anything. I don't know. Let's tell you what. Let's get all these. We get some booze. The milk we can use to make some food. We could use it to make cheese, but it can also be used as an ingredient. A random bucket. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be buying much. Um, I'm not convinced a copper whip or a silver spear is a particularly good weapon. Let's get an extra pick just for, you know, we can scale up our mining by assigning more people to mining if we've got a bunch of extra picks going around. The iron flail might be a reasonable weapon. Um, maybe. Is it going to be as good as our silver war hammers or maybe steel bat axes later? No, but it, we can use it temporarily and that's going to be okay. All the things with large are going to skip because our dwarves can't wear it anyway. Get some various shields. Got to skip that clothing. I don't think I care about any of the seeds in the bags. Ooh, the bolts. That's an okay idea. Okay, at this point, before I keep flagging more, let's make sure we've got enough cash available to offer them. So that's a mug bin. Gem's really not worth very much. More finished goods. Okay, they're turning a profit, but not a huge one. Now, again, if we do a more small trades, we do get more skill buildup, but I don't know if I care that much. Let's see here. Let's get ourselves some yarn and things, because apparently that was an issue before. March. Uh, backpacks are nice for our military. We've got a cheap quiver as well. I think we'll have to add in a little bit more money. Oh, I wouldn't mind getting some written works for our library. Okay, let's do this. We'll offer them 8,000 trade, but I'm sure they'll take this. I could probably trim back, but there we go. Congratulations, you got yourself a really good deal because I'm too lazy to negotiate. We don't need a broker anymore. All right, good. Now, our mug industry, we only have a single craft dwarf workshop. It is on the repeat for mugs. Do I actually... Am I only making mugs on the repeat task as opposed to having anything on order over here? Well, that's interesting. I must have set that up earlier in the tutorial before I... Uh, oops. Before I talk too much about the work orders system. I mean, this is fine. I might want to build another work, craft workshop or two and uh, set something up through the work order system. Uh, just to be able to speedily build more mugs before the dwarves come. I kind of want to do that. And the Crafts Dwarf Workshop do get used for a variety of different things. Oop, that's Carpenters. Crafts. Yeah, I'm going to pop down two more. Do I want to choose what material I use for this? Okay, pause because there's combat. Uh, well, I don't want to use these bars, that's for sure. Forgot that they might end up doing that kind of thing. Um, you can just make it out of wood. That's fine. Okay. This blind cave over punches the Reacher. Okay, there's just some monsters fighting. Okay. We don't have to worry about them. So, since we're building those, let's go ahead and set up a rock mug job over here. Um, how do I want to work this? We could just have it on a non-stop loop. And I might just do that. We could change our mind later. But for now, there you go. We're just going to like queue up 10 rock muck jobs and check every day. Every time it's complete, just restart it. Queue it up non-stop. Um, I could put a limiter on it, but let's leave it for now. Uh, what we could do is later on retroactively add a limiter if we're unhappy about things. Where is this, where is this fighting happening anyway? I mean, I knew it was going to be in the cavern. I just wasn't sure where. That's the blind cave ogre there. And the Reacher over here. I gotta say, these graphics are quite good because uh, the tile sets, because I instantly was able to recognize which creature was which, despite having never seen the graphics for the blind cave ogre or the Reacher yet so far. They really did a nice job with this. Are you planting? You're unconscious. Oh, you're asleep. You're asleep here. Why are they there? You have a dormitory. Why did you fall asleep there? Maybe you, if the dormitories are too far or inconvenient, maybe you don't rush there. I mean, it's conceivable all the beds could have been used. Inconceivable, but it seems kind of unlikely. 
So I don't know. I don't know if there was a door missing there. Yeah, not, these things have been haven't been flagged yet for bedrooms. Um, do we have some beds ready to go? Migrants have arrived. Let's see how high that population number gets. Okay, and we know that even if the beds haven't been placed yet, we can do the bedroom designations immediately. So let's go to multi-mode. Do that. Hit done. More bedrooms ready. We can furnish them with more stuff later as well. So we're what, like 43, 44 dwarves, somewhere around there? Maybe we were 42, I don't remember. Um, low 40s was our population here before it started. Is it stopping at 56? All right, so we got at least a dozen new dwarves. Mm -hmm. More jet here if we want to make some really cool looking buildings. I gotta say, the stuff made out of jet looks awesome. It looks really cool. Now, one of the things we're going to want to do as a project at some point is expand maybe our walls um, over here in some way. Maybe build a secondary ring. The secondary ring might not need to be roofed like this one here is. Alternatively, the other thing I can do is give our dwarves um, access to the top here. So have some sort of staircase that can reach up to the top uh, so that our dwarves can use this as a firing platform if, uh, if we get attacked. However, if I'm going to do that, it's going to be very important that I have my floor extend one edge past this wall. Because right now, if I had some dwarves on the roof over here doing things, enemies could come and they could climb the wall and get onto the roof. If we overhang the floor by one tile, then enemies cannot climb up it. Um, alternatively, uh, well, as long as there's any kind of overhang, which could also be fortifications, which are arrow slits, which actually seem like a pretty good idea. Now, the one thing with fortifications um, and things like that, your dwarves, uh, I actually haven't tested it in this version, in 5.0. Um, but up until now, for sure, in Dwarf Fortress, dwarves can walk diagonally and can even squeeze through a diagonal spot. If like there's a wall here and a wall here, I believe things can squeeze through those positions. But they can't build diagonally. <clears throat> so is that an actual baby? Oh, it is an actual baby. How lovely. Um, I suppose I should probably... Okay, merchant's leaving soon. That's fine. I, I should check because it would be very convenient if they could. Because what would be nice here is under construction, fortifications, uh, select material. Um, if I do this... Yeah, just use some blocks. And that. Okay. What we're going to see... Dwarves should be able to stand here and build the wall on the right and the wall to the... On the north, so the north and east wall should be buildable, but I don't think the one in northeast is buildable. Again, yeah, this is a fortification, not a wall. Fortification's kind of like a wall, but it's got arrow slits in it, so you can shoot through. So we're gonna do a little test, but yeah, I suspect this one can't can ever never be done. It's not suspended. It's not on suspend, but I don't think dwarves can ever do this one. Which is a little bit of a pain in the butt, because how do you do that? Well, we're gonna have to do a wee bit of micromanagement for it. So, we're going to go back to construction. We're going to go fortification. I'm going to drag it from here to here. And click the all button on these blocks, which is lovely. And I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct this little bit right there. Now, to be able to do these bits here, they're going to need to be able to walk adjacent to it. So, I'm going to have to go into construction. Floor. I'm going to have to temporarily put a floor here and here. So what will happen, dwarves will build these floors, and then they'll be able to finish these fortifications. Same thing here. And we'll get it ready there. And I'm going to keep trying to... I don't know if I have enough, but if I can keep doing the rock salt blocks, um, I'll feel pretty good about that. Fortification from here to there. Rock salt. Ooh, no, I don't have enough. I could put in a specific request to make sure we're spamming the rock stone, rock salt blocks. It doesn't actually matter them. I mean, our floor's already got a mismatch, so I guess it's not a big deal. So now that these corner pieces have been built, now what I'm going to do is go into construction mode and ask for them to be removed. Because I don't think I can build construct, I don't think I can build fortifications over a floor. I can build them on the ground. Oops. Come on, Quill. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't build fortification on there. So, well, what actually? What error did it give me there? Oh, 
Mistakes were made. Hang on. This is my um, this is my ramp for accessing the ceiling, which is now blocked. I was like, hold on a second. That wasn't the error message I was expecting. This fortification here is preventing dwarves from going up and down the stairs. I was hoping one of these would deconstruct it. But I'm not sure that they are. No job. Can you can you not deconstruct this wall, buddy? Well, that seems a little bit odd. You should be able to. Okay. Well, let's rescue our dwarves. You know what I should do? Is I should just get... Yeah. Let's just go ahead and get our stuff ready here with our flooring. So if I go to construction and stairs... Hang on a sec. How is this working with this interface? Because things are a little different. If I do this and do that, you will ask me for material. Oh, you will punch through the floor here. Okay, because now what we're going to have is we're going to have a stair from inside here that will go to the roof. Now, our dwarves should be able to access this. The dwarves inside our fortress should be able to access this and get this built. There we go. Is that what you're doing? Okay. And then are you going to be able to stand on these stairs and work above? I know some people have said a few things about the stair system with the new Dwarf Fortress. With Fort Dwarf Fortress 5.0, which is what we're on, building upwards with stairs can be a little tricksy, which I'm kind of worried is still the case. Could also be because there's a floor there. But I'm not sure that their dwarves are properly able to build from down here, which normally they would be in old versions. Maybe because there's the floors there is an issue because I don't think normally I'd be able to build stairs on here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and build a ramp on the outside. If nothing else, it'll free the dwarves that are currently stuck up there and might give us the ability to get the staircase properly built. Someone should come and do this relatively quickly. There we go. And now our dwarves... Oh, interestingly enough, so now this is being worked on, but... I don't know why none of the dwarves that were on the roof were working to deconstruct this, because they should have been able to. Now, a completely different dwarf is going to walk their way up onto the roof and then stand right here and deconstruct it, which the other dwarves should have been able to do. See that? Also, it looked like he did diagonally, which now I'm just super annoyed about. But Okay, and this floor is done. So now what we can do, because we also don't want to give the ability for our enemies to climb onto our ceiling. I'm going to remove these outer ramps. Now the only way to get to the roof is with this staircase over here, which does punch through, which is going to be okay. Um, this, I was going to say, this tile here probably got suspended, so I'm just going to go and unsuspend this. And now that we can access the roof, actually, I'm going to see if I can build a fortification on top of this. I, I expect the answer to be no, but I'm expecting a different error message. It is letting me do it. Well, that's quite interesting. Maybe maybe you could in, in the previous version as well. I felt like I was going to have to deconstruct the floor. Now I wonder, if I deconstruct this fortification... You know what? Let's do it for science. I'm just going to deconstruct all of it. Because I'm wondering if this, the floor was still here. It doesn't actually show it in the tooltip. It just says bauxite... Or sorry, over here. Yeah, bauxite block fortification. I'm wondering if it did replace the floor. And in any case, I'm wondering... You know what, for science, if I go and deconstruct over here, I'm betting there's going to be nothing in this tile. Let's find out. Yeah, okay, nothing in that tile. Okay, experimentation done. The corner pieces uh, are not complete. Did I cancel that inadvertently? My bad. Uh, fortification right here. Sure, you can make bauxite, that's fine. And then over here, let's complete this section. Yeah, see, we carved some chalk blocks, which should no longer happen. We should no longer be carving chalk blocks. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and use them for now. Since I don't think they can be used for, uh, for smelting purposes. Anyway, as soon as this corner piece gets installed, then I will designate perfect. The fortification at the top... Like so. And yeah, use whatever blocks. That's fine. Okay. Now, um, 
this upper area is open to the air. So theoretically, this area could be a place where we get annoyed by flyers, but really only our military should be on here, so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, things could potentially fly down through this staircase. So what we're gonna want to build is a hatch. Hatches can be placed at the top of stairwells or above ramps, control movement in the fort when they're forbidden or attached levers. Hatches uh, work basically the same as doors, but they are like flat. We are gonna have to go and make a hatch cover first. So let's just ask for a one-time hatch. Whoa, I think I'll want rock hatch cover. And just go ahead and make me one. And then we'll be put, able to put it on the staircase again to provide a bit of an airlock in there. Um, oh, this place here, right, I deconstructed that. I've got to rebuild this fortification. I had forgotten. Right here. Cool. And these get, uh, no, they're just inactive. Oh, I don't have any floor here. They can't reach this fortification. I need to put a floor right on top of where the drawbridge is because everywhere else they can walk on top of the roof as if it was a floor but there was no or sorry they can walk on top of the wall as if it was a floor but there was none over here so one more little bit of work here done okay they'll build the floor then they'll be able to finish that excellent <gasps> soldiering yeah we'll grab you we definitely have enough to make another squad now so let's go ahead and do that. We have um, we have a metal equipped melee squad. I'm gonna make an archer group over here. By default, the archer squad does get equipped with leather armor. We can change that if we want. Oops, not equip, although it would be here. Uh, we can change that if you want. And I may. But for now, let's get this kitted out. Oh, there we go, close that window please. Um, well, Ranger, hopefully we'll already have some archery skills. There's another Ranger over there. Gelder is not really a job I care too much about. Hunter, there we go, Marksman skill. Just seeing if I saw anything else, but hey, Lime Maker. Oh, there was another Ranger in there, too. Yeah, no relevant skill, which is interesting. I was expecting you would have some archery stuff, but I guess it's fine. Peasant. I'm just trying to avoid anyone who's got like a job title that indicates maybe something a little higher skilled and maybe a little bit more important to us. I don't think animal caretaker is something that we're going to value too much in terms of let's make sure not to get those killed. Okay, so that's done. Now that you guys are in here. Because I know there's some little bugginess in terms of... Uh, Oh, I can save and uniform change this way? Well, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. Um, I know that there's an issue with, if you're trying to make your own custom uniform for your archers, they might not pick up bolts because we don't have the user interface to interact with bolts right now. Uh, I expect this will be something that changes hopefully relatively soon. Uh, so the trick is um, to always use the built-in archer uniform first because it has bolt allocation. But then afterwards, you can make a change. So now with the oily ways, I'm going to rename the squad here, but we can go under material and say metal. So now we can change them. Like that. And then if I call this metal archer, confirm and save uniform. Now, if I want to create a new squad, there we go. We got Metal Archer over there. Um, whether or not I could assign Metal Archer first and have it work properly, or if I have to assign Archer first and then afterwards go and assign them the Metal Archer one, I might do that for safety. Or I might, if I do make another Archer squad, I might, for science, try to assign the Metal Archer thing first. But there we go. So now we have a melee squad, the Laborious Funerals, and the Oily Ways. I'm going to rename you. And I'm pretty sure previously I could just type in an arbitrary name in there. Um, but now we are going to uh, use this interface over here to get dwarven names. So currently it's the ways come so over here. And then the adjective is oily. I'll leave oily in here. That's going to be okay. But I'm going to have you be the oily. Oily arrows would be nice. This is going to be singular. 
But there you go. Just so it'll make it a little bit more clear to me that it's a range group. I could also potentially consider standardizing on my symbols, like say always using a plus for archer ones and then always using maybe a square for melee. That could make it a little easier for me to be able to remember what type of squad is what. But there you go. We got the oily arrows organized in here. We do have a barracks down here. Now, currently this barrack is only being used by the Laborers Funeral Squad. And I think that's okay, but I think I'm gonna make a separate barracks on the roof for archers. This is kind of gonna be their natural position. Oh, someone's doing some hunting, okay. So in fact, let's go and build. We're gonna, we're gonna set up an archery range. We're gonna set up an archery target. Um, yeah, over on this side is gonna be fine. We could actually set up more than one. Tell you what, let's set up a, a trio like this. And then, yeah, we can build an archery range like so. Let's set a direction. I have to say, the game's pretty smart. It seems to always pick the correct direction here for the archery. So they're going to be firing upward. So they'll stand down over here and shoot at these targets over here. I will assign this to my Oily Arrows squad and they will train their archery stuff over here. Um, we will want them to have a conventional barracks as well, because we are going to want them to train... Oop, I don't think the click took. We are going to want them to train other miscellaneous combat activities, and they will be doing that in their barracks zone. So we're going to go ahead and set that as a training. We might set up some storage and stuff here later too, but we'll see. You know what? I'm going to take another bard. we got another migration wave. Let's add to our bards. I think this is all just hunting. Yeah, still hunting the aardvarks. There you go. So archers going to stand up here. They'll do that. And then if there is a siege that happens, I can encourage them to get up against a wall. We could also set up like little patrol routes and stuff for them, but I could just station them up against the wall. They'll shoot through these arrow slits and do that. One thing that can help to make sure your dwarves bunch up against the wall properly, uh, against the fortifications properly, is you can build a wall after so that they only have a one tile wide path over here and you'll encourage the, them to smush up against the fortifications we may end up doing that um relatively soon but for now we can just leave it be the important thing is to get them equipped and training speaking of equipment i guess what i should do do we have a boyer um i think the answer is no I don't see anything here that looks like a bower. And mousing over, I'm not seeing the name show up. So let's get a new workshop. Bower. Bower makes wooden crossbows. Um, you know what? I could just make metal crossbows. So if a rain if a crossbow equipped dwarf is forced into melee combat, they will use their crossbow as a hammer. So the material of the crossbow has no impact whatsoever on ranged combat. Um the material of the bolt has an impact on range combat, but the material of the crossbow itself does not. However, if they are forced into melee, then the material of the crossbow matters. Hammering someone with a wooden crossbow doesn't do much. Hammering them with a heavy crossbow, like say an iron crossbow does. I don't think we have to make steel because we're not worried about having it hold an edge. We just need it to be heavier for hammering purposes. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a request for 10 iron crossbows. There we go. One time job, 10 iron crossbows. I think I like that a lot. Did we ever get around to making any bolt jobs? I think the answer is no. I think we're going to use all of the copper we've got to make crossbow bolts. Copper crossbow bolts. I'm not planning on using the copper for anything else. So um, let's put in a job and ask for five copper crossbow bolts. Or that's. Sorry, my bad. I was making copper crossbows. What I want is copper bolts. So make a batch of five. I don't remember how many uh, crossbow bolts this actually produces per batch. 10, 20. I could look it up, but why would I do that? That, that would mean not being completely lazy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a job is anytime we have five copper bars and enough refined coal to make it work. Anytime we have five copper bars, do five batches of copper bolts um, and we'll just use all the copper we've got to to do that um 
Typically in Classic Dwarf Fortress, I would also set up jobs to make wooden and bone bolts, and I would use wooden bolts for our crossbow training so that we weren't using them up for, um, we weren't using up metal bolts for just training. But I definitely want them to use metal bolts if we've got them for actual combat. For hunting, it's sort of a mixed bag. A lot of time for hunting, I just use uh, wooden bolts as well or bone bolts just cheap materials um just because it's not like i care about them winning their hunting combat super fast um and really if it takes them more shots to like kill a aardvark whatever then they're just training up their skill it's another way to exercise but because we don't have control over the, the, the what they'll bring with them in their quivers right now um i'm going to go ahead and just make the metal bolts and try to maximize around there oh some of our horses are starting to i guess that's because I have not been assigning... We don't have a pasture. Let me go and set one up. Pen pasture over here. Now, mostly I'm going to be butchering animals, but there, we might have some pets that do need to be pastured, so I should really do this. Um, only, so we only have to worry about grazing animals. Dogs, cats don't graze. Pigs don't graze, and they make excellent farm animals because of that. I don't think any of the bird types do either. Reindeer... Horses, I think that's the puppy. Water buffalo, they do graze. So I'm going to assign them over here. And in classic, I would use DF hack at this point to filter this list to only show me grazing animals. And hopefully that might be something that gets brought into the base dwarf fortress. I never really worried about it before because I had DF hack, but now not having it eh, feels less than great. But having done that, I'm also going to take a look over here um, at the livestock because if these guys aren't pets, I really, I don't have breeding pairs or anything like that. So I may have not needed to assign them the pasture, but I kind of want to showcase it. Um, we could wait for the horse to fully mature before we butcher it, but meh. Okay, we're going to do that. Um, we'll keep the birds around and certainly the pigs. The ideal for me is if we could get a breeding pair of pigs, we could make a pasture for them underground somewhere. Um, and they would just multiply you know, in limitless amounts. Um, it would be nice. So DF hack, again, I'm going to talk about it a lot because it's there. DF hack does let you set up rules for like, well, if you end up with more than like 10 pigs, you know, start butchering them to keep the numbers under control. And that's your meat industry. Uh, Rimworld has that built in as well. Here we would have to manually manage that job, which I, it wouldn't be fine. But every now and again, I would look to see, okay, how many, how many pigs do we have? Okay. We've got a bunch. All right, let's, let's butcher some and this and that, but so we'll do that. So these animals I did just assign to the pen. I'm going to be butchering them now, but now you know how to make a pen and it'll be ready to go for next time. I believe um, if animals give birth, right? So if they breed and give birth, I think the newborn animals automatically get assigned to the pen that the mother was in, which is convenient. Uh, but basically after every migrant wave, migrants bring animals with them. After every migrant wave, I should really be looking uh, to see if I've got any more animals that I should be butchering or penning in some way. Well, look at everyone just coming to the surface all of a sudden. Oh, probably because some stuff just got butchered. So they're emptying all the uh, the garbage items in the butcher shop. Should almost have the door on the other side because that's where the refuse pile is. Oh, well, it's not like it's that much more of a walk. That's okay. Are you guys training? Yes, combat drills. Okay, so yeah, they're not practicing their bow craft, although they might not have any bows yet. I did want to make sure to get some quivers. Now, I know we've got some in the fortress. I could search here, but I believe this is only going to tell me quivers that we have in our stockpile. With Theoretically, our hunters might already have some, and some of our military dwarves might have grabbed some as well. Uh, but I don't know. I could check here the oily arrows, their equipment. Actually, I don't think... I don't know if quiver shows up as a category. Backpacks and... Um, drinking um, devices, so either leather water skins or uh, metal flasks, they all count as the same thing, they would be listed here. But maybe once they get a bow equipped, they get a thing. I feel like there was a thing before. Anyway, I'm going to request at least six more quivers and either make them out of adamantine, which we don't have and would kind of be a waste of adamantine, or make them out of leather. So I'm going to do that. Well, I was going to say I'll make six. You know what? I'll put it, I'll leave it at 10 in here so that we have some spares around for our hunters. Because I think they use the quivers as well. So by putting in 10, it guarantees that I have 10 for my squad and the extra I have sitting around already will cover our hunting situations. So that's going to be all right. And in theory, we're going to have some leather from having done the butchering. 
So fingers crossed there. We are going to have to queue up some more armor jobs, which actually, I don't think I ever did set up any of that, right? I got the steel industry started, but I never started making equipment. So let's go ahead and take uh, start taking a look at that. Now, we can see from the military screen, right? If we take a look at... Oh, if we take a look at the autosave. Oh, I should put a cut in here, actually. Maybe I'll do that. We're going to put a cut in here. Next episode, we're going to pick up on making our equipment for our military. Yeah, we're going to do that. Hopefully, we've got some steel stockpiled already. Um, but yeah, we're going to start consuming it pretty quickly. And we are going to consume a lot because some of the armor pieces we make take multiple bars of steel. So uh, it is going to be quite the demand. But uh, hopefully, we've got a decent amount of flow through. And we've got enough people around here that should be okay. We've got the extra smelters going on as well. So um, And then the OG one over here. So hopefully, we get a steady supply. All right, folks. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.